Hello and welcome back to Bookish and welcome back to my series on where not to start this week's or this month's where not to start with is where not to start with Honoré Balzac. Uh, if you follow my channel, you know that Balzac is one of my favorite authors. As a matter of fact, when I started uh, the idea for making this series about videos about where not to start uh, actually came from uh, a number of people in the comment section over the years I've been talking about Balzac and his work asking me, you know, where would I recommend starting with Balzac. The same things happen. Uh, I think with Faulkner, probably the other author I get that question about most. So, you know, that's kind of the genesis of this whole series. And, you know, one of the things I try to emphasize uh, about uh, the books I choose to say, hey, don't start with this one, is it's not that I'm saying that they're necessarily bad books. Uh, it's just, you know, for practical purposes, sometimes it's better not to start with a book or, you know, just in my opinion, uh, a book will give you uh, maybe the wrong idea about one of these authors' works. Uh, and kind of uh, either because, you know, the book doesn't fit in with what I think is more uh, the bigger part of, of what they wrote and their style and what's most characteristic of what I think of their best work, it kind of stands out. And I don't think there's a better uh, example of that than what I'm going to tell you about, you know, where not to start with Honoré de Balzac because, you know, up till now, and I, I think I've read you know, 13 or so of Balzac's novels, it might be, it's around there. Uh, and I certainly haven't read all because Balzac, one of the most prolific writers uh, in, you know, uh, the Western, in the tradition of Western literature. Uh, but, you know, I have read a lot of his books and I, I can honestly tell you that there, there are none of his books I think are bad. So when I tell you not to start with these books, it's for reasons other than the book being bad. So just to go ahead and start off without this whole preamble, uh, one of the books I would tell you not to start with is uh, The Wild Ass's Skin. Uh, this is my least favorite Balzac novel that I've read up to this point, I think. Uh, there's a novella, which I just think is relatively, you know, not great that I've read, uh, that might be a little less my favorite. But full-length novel, The Wild Ass's Skin, is my least favorite. So this basically tells the story of a young man uh, in Paris who's down on his luck. This is a common theme uh, in Balzac's work. Uh, and he essentially finds a, a magical skin which more or less uh, grants him whatever he wants, whatever his wishes are, but it costs him a little bit uh, of his life. Uh, and, you know, the story kind of heads in tragic directions uh, because of that. Now, you know, if you know anything about Balzac, you know what he was really writing about in all of his novels is this kind of change uh, in society, in French and Parisian society, uh, brought about by uh, the acquisition of wealth by lots of people who didn't have, you know, traditional um, ruling class names, and after the revolution who maybe, you know, had that kind of linked to royalty or the upper classes had kind of become unpopular. Uh, and he's writing this period after that, kind of the with the return of the monarchy is kind of a right around the time uh, when he's writing. Uh, and he was writing a lot about, you know, uh, the impacts of greed uh, and social class climbing and all kinds of issues, you know, related to that. And this book fits really well, this book fits really well within that, but it has this supernatural thing. And it's not that there's no other example of supernatural stuff at work uh, in Balzac's uh, novels, but that supernatural thing is, I think, as far as I can know from what I've read, is relatively uncommon. And so to me, it introduces a note of, you know, where there's a lack of realism, uh, which I don't really care for, because one of the things I like about Balzac is that he creates, I think, just really recreates the world of Paris in which, you know, he lived and slightly lived afterwards in a really realistic way with all the social classes represented and all kinds of intrigue and money and debt and jobs and all kinds of things are in there and so to me to introduce kind of a magical element really just didn't sit well for me and like I said it's not that the, that's not the only book in which there are elements like that but to me it's the one in which that's most present. I would also say uh, not to start with uh, a short novel by Balzac called The Unknown Masterpiece which is essentially about art and obsession. It actually involves uh, uh, and references some real artists uh, during the during the time period, uh, and it's a really good uh, short novel. But again, this is not where I would start. It's not that the book is bad. It's not that I didn't like it, but it's not where I would start because I think it's a little bit 
narrowly focused. And for me, one of the things that's great about Balzac is this kind of larger picture of the world that he's writing about, you know, like the complexity of society. And this is really narrowly focused on just a few people. And while I think it's excellent, I think if you started there, you might get the wrong idea uh, about Balzac and his work and about what he was up to and what he was writing about. So again, you know, keep in mind, I'm not saying this is a bad book at all, but it just to me, it would be a bad place to start. This would be something, uh, and you know, obviously I'm going on my own experience. This would be something to read, you know, uh, to me after you've gotten through some of the more important, some of the larger scale, uh, some of the broader, uh, more broadly focused uh, uh, of Balzac's novels. Uh, but I would not start here. And I, it's tempting. I'll go ahead and mention this too. Uh, it is tempting with Balzac to start with some of the works that are kind of known as his short novels. One of the things that happens sometimes with, with Balzac is he wrote short novels, which were all kind of involved maybe <clears throat> the same characters or same groups, and they kind of get grouped together as one book. Sometimes they're standalones, and there are lots of them out there. Um, and I certainly haven't read all of those. But uh, one of the problems then I also think with the short novels is that a lot of them, the ones I've read so far, have a tendency to create a, a microcosmic world instead of this kind of macro world, which I think is where Balzac is at his best. And then finally, the other book I would tell you not to start with uh, is actually one of my favorite Balzac novels, and that's A Harlot High uh, and Low. Uh, and the only reason not to start with this one is it's essentially a sequel uh, to Balzac's uh, novel, uh, Lost Illusions. It follows the further career, <clears throat> adventures, misadventures, descent into <clears throat> corruption uh, and hell. Uh, the main character, Lost Illusions, named Lucien uh, Robonpré, uh, and um, his love for essentially a courtesan named Esther Gobsek and his dealings with the thief, Valtren. Um, and it's, it's a really great uh, novel, but it's a sequel. Uh, and it doesn't, you know, it's not always clear, I think, on all the jacket copy uh, that this is, in fact, uh, a sequel. Um, I, matter of fact, I can't even see it necessarily really easily on the back of this, uh, of the Penguin Classic I have. And it's, you can read it as a standalone. It works, but I think it's a much richer book if you've read Lost Illusions first. So again, uh, I wouldn't start there. As I always do in these videos, I always try to come up with places uh, to start. Um, uh, to give you three examples of books maybe where you could start uh, reading Balzac. If you're looking for a short introductory novel uh, to Balzac, I would go with one of his earliest, and that's Colonel Chabert. Now, this is one of those, you know, print-on-demand copies, and I actually made a video where I expressed my kind of unhappiness with how poorly this was made and ended up uh, listening to it as an audiobook and then going through the text, and in that way I could, you know, make sure uh, things were right, and anyway... Um, this I just thought was a great story about Colonel Chabert and uh, uh, who's believed to be dead. There's a really great, <laughs> gruesome story about how he extricates him from a himself from a situation. He is one of Napoleon's officers uh, when he was thought dead. Uh, his wife essentially remarries, and this book is about him returning to life. And why I would recommend this short novel over something like, um, uh, over something like the Unknown Masterpiece. Uh, and some of the other short novels, is this gives you that image, that picture, that world of complexity uh, that I think Balzac is best at, where you see different levels of society, poor to rich, where you see kind of one of his themes, and that is the scheming of people uh, for money um, and, and advancement and positions in society. And you have in the form of uh, Colonel Chabert and his friends relatively noble characters from uh, who end up in the lower classes and, you know, not so great characters in the upper classes and middle class characters who have, anyway, it, it, to me it's a richer story because it involves more uh, Parisian society. Uh, along those lines also, uh, I really like The Black Sheep. This is one of, uh, this is a standalone novel and involves uh, essentially two brothers, one who is a gambler and uh, a military officer and is attractive to women and he's an adventurer and his brother who is far more uh, quiet and sensitive and an artist and uh, how uh, each brother uh, affects their family affects one another uh, it gives you good in, it gives you a good insight I think into Parisian life of the time period <clears throat> with its uh, with its gambling with its poverty with the lack of opportunities uh, lack of uh, resources for people once you know something's gone terribly wrong good you know uh, 
uh, relation, good uh, kind of look at uh, brother to brother relationship uh, and mother and son relationships in the book. And I just found this to be really interesting and great. Uh, and it has uh, a happy ending too, by the way. I hope that didn't spoil anything. But probably the book I recommend most often, most consistently is a place to start because if you've asked me this question, I might have given you a different answer uh, at one point. But the place I think is the best place to start is with Père Goriot, sometimes called Old Goriot or Father uh, Goriot. Uh, this, this, this novel uh, follows a young man uh, whose last name is Rastignac, I believe, who comes to Paris to make his fortune. This is a, this is a fairly... Uh, common theme in a lot of uh, Balzac's novels, these young men who are trying to, you know, advance themselves. Uh, he ends up living in a, a boarding house where he meets this uh, old figure named uh, Goriot, and he learns about his family situation and uh, why he is living in this kind of rundown situation. Uh, the story is really based on uh, basic plot of the story, follows a plot of Shakespeare's King Lear, so if you're familiar with the King Lear story, you kind of have an entree into understanding parts of the plot. Uh, we do meet the thief Valtren here. Uh, I always pronounce that guy's last wrong name, but you meet the thief uh, here, and he's one of the great characters in Balzac. So to me, this just has a lot of things going on. Uh, it gives you an, an, an uh, insight into the opportunities for young men uh, in Paris, uh, the temptations for young men in Paris, the downfall of young men in Paris, and at the same time, uh, kind of reflects this uh, similar things happening. Between the, with the relationship of um, uh, Old Goriot and his daughters. But anyway, there you go. There's my video on where not to start with the novels of Honoré de Balzac. I look forward to your comments in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.